Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an absolute value equation with complex numbers. So we have a very special equation, the absolute value of z minus i over z plus i is equal to 2 and we're going to find the z values that satisfy this equation. Of course, we can also generalize this method. We can talk about that as well because this is a very special case scenario. Now, my first question would be, how many solutions are there? Second question, are there infinitely many solutions or is there a single solution or uh, does this equation have any solutions at all? So those are good questions. We're going to answer them towards the end. Okay, let's get to work. Now, one of the first uh, properties that we'll use and if you don't use that, that would probably be the first method and I can briefly talk about it without getting into too many details. Obviously, I can go ahead and replace z with a plus bi, can't I? That gives you the following. Absolute value of z minus i is just going to be from here, a plus bi minus i, which can be written as b minus 1i, divided by a plus b plus 1i because the imaginary parts will be added and then we're going to take the absolute value and we want that to equal 2. Now if you think about this type of expression, how do you take the absolute value of a quotient, right? Pretend you don't know that super duper special property. You would get rid of the i at the bottom, right? So let's go ahead and get rid of the imaginary or complex number at the bottom. Let's make it real. And as you know, to make a complex number real, we need to multiply by the conjugate. So let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by a minus the quantity b plus 1i. And of course, we have to do the same thing here. And then we're going to get a product, which is kind of like this. a times a is a squared, and then a times b plus 1i. But with a minus sign, it's going to look like this. And then I'm going to multiply these two. That's going to give me plus i times, I mean, a times b minus 1i. And finally, when you multiply b minus 1i and b plus 1i, that's going to give you b squared minus 1 times i squared. But i squared is negative 1, so it's going to be a minus sign. And this will be b squared minus 1. Okay. And then all over the bottom one is the uh, sum of two squares. I was about to say difference, but it's a sum of two squares. Remember that it's always a real number. Now, they, these two don't cancel out, but we can combine them. For example, we can get a squared minus b squared plus 1 as the real part. And as the imaginary part, think about it. You have a, b minus a, and then you have negative a, b minus a. And of course, a, b's are going to cancel out, and you're going to end up with negative 2a, i. That's going to be our imaginary part. Okay? And then all of that is divided by, of course, a squared plus b plus 1 squared. Now, how do you find the absolute value of something like this? So, you can go ahead and look at the real part and the imaginary part. To separate them, we could write it like this. Let's separate them. And then this will be 2a over the same thing. And now, it's split up into the real and imaginary parts. Notice that this is the real part and this is the imaginary part. Remember, imaginary part does not include the i, it's just the coefficient. And of course with the minus sign, so I kind of messed up on that one. It's supposed to be the um, expression with the minus sign. So we're supposed to take the negative. But what I, what I can do here is a little trick. Put the minus sign here and then just take that. See? Okay, there's a solution. So now, those are the real and imaginary parts. And of course, the absolute value is defined, absolute value of z is defined as square root of a squared plus b squared. I mean, the real part squared, I should probably write it in general form, like real part squared plus imaginary part squared and square root of that. In other words, it's the z times z bar square root of that. So we can go ahead and take this expression, square it, and then add it to the square of the other part, and negative is not going to matter here, but I'm still writing it. And then, of course, you have to square root the whole thing. And that should give you the answer, right? Yes, but imagine how painful this is going to be when you get into something like this. 
obviously there is a better way and that's called the second method. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. So basically our problem is given as the absolute value of z minus i over z plus i is equal to 2. So hopefully you appreciate this property now since you've seen the painful version. Now, if you have the absolute value of z sub 1 over z sub 2, these are like two different complex numbers, or they could be the same, I guess, you could split the absolute value, just like with real numbers, right? Obviously, real numbers are a subset of complex numbers, so hopefully lots of good properties that real numbers have will also be satisfied by complex numbers, but things are a little different there. So now, by using that property, we're able to separate the top and the bottom, and that's actually a huge improvement. So that kind of gives you something like this. Whenever I have uh, something in general like the absolute value of z minus z1 divided by z minus z2 equals a constant, this represents something special. We call these problems locus problems, which means the set of points that satisfy this type of equation and they basically form a really nice picture, which you'll see in a little bit. So let's go ahead and work this out. I can go ahead and cross multiply, definitely, and this is super helpful. And then we can find the absolute value separately. Now again, as before, we're going to replace z with a plus bi, and it's the same z, so it's going to be a plus b minus 1i. Again, we're going to find the same things, but this time it's going to be a lot easier. And of course, it's going to be b plus 1, and so on and so forth. Now, notice that the absolute value of a plus b minus 1 times i is going to be the square root of e squ a squared plus b minus 1 squared. And we do have a 2 outside of this. And that'll be the a squared plus b plus 1 squared. And of course, you're supposed to square root that. So why don't I just use the square root instead of parentheses? Because that's going to work, right? Great. Now, we, we did get ourselves a good equation, but let's get rid of the radicals. Without that, it will be impossible to solve, right? So let's go ahead and square both sides. That gives us a squared plus b minus 1 squared, because we got rid of the radical. 2 squared is 4, and I'm going to multiply this by a squared plus b plus 1 squared. Now, here's what we need to do. We need to expand everything and multiply by 4 and then put everything on the same side. That's what makes this problem fun. <laughs> okay, a squared plus b squared minus 2b, or not 2b, allow me to do that, equals 4 times a squared plus b squared plus 2b plus 1. Now, let's go ahead and distribute the 4. That gives us 4a squared plus 4b squared plus 8b plus 4, right? And now let's go ahead and put everything on the positive side of a squared and b squared. That gives us 3a squared plus 3b squared plus 10b plus 3 equals 0. And guess what this is? This is the equation of a circle. But first, we need to... Mu uh, Multiply now. Well, you can multiply by one third. We need to divide both sides by 3 to get a squared plus b squared plus 10 over 3b plus 1 equals 0. Okay? To get the equation, so this is the equation of a circle, so what, right? How do you graph the circle? We need to find the center and the radius. So here's how we can do it, completing the square. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides first. Remember how completing the square is done. And then we're going to add to both sides. A squared is good, but we need to add half of 10 thirds squared. And I'll talk about this in um, some lecture notes, which I'm planning to turn into a book anyways. Surprise. Uh, but we're supposed to add uh, 5 thirds squared to both sides, which is actually 25 ninths. Let me write it that way here. Now, this expression becomes the following. This part becomes a perfect square, and we can write it as a squared plus b plus 5 thirds squared. So I don't really care about the value of 5 thirds squared. And this is going to be 16 ninths, which is nice because 16 ninths is a perfect square. And this is perfect because we have a center at 0, negative 5 thirds, 
that's the center. I don't know if you want to call it C or something else. And the radius would be 4 thirds. Remember, this is radius squared. In general, it is going to be A minus A sub 1 squared plus B minus B sub 1 squared equals R squared. Or if you want to write it as X minus X sub 1 squared plus Y minus y sub 1 squared equals r squared. That's going to give you the center as x sub 1 comma y sub 1. And I had to use x and y because unfortunately Desmos cannot graph it if you use a and b instead of x and y. And this is the circle we've been talking about. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.